Hello and welcome once again to the Thrifty Collector. Today, I'm uh, going to go over the passing, a uh, little bit late on this, of Terry Funk. Uh, being from the North, I did not know who Terry Funk was until about the mid-90s when he came out in the WWF as Chainsaw Charlie with Mick Foley. Uh, I felt pretty bad about that once I realized how amazing of a career Terry had. And uh, it's sad that he did have his passing, but... Um, I do have a couple of his wrestling all-star cards and thought I'd at least show them and uh, do a little talk about Terry. So, like I said, I remember when he came out as Chainsaw Charlie with Mick Foley. Uh, he came out of the box, which if you listen to Cornette and Russo, uh, they both kind of have their own versions of that whole thing. Uh, Russo kind of mocks Cornette, Cornette about the fact that when Cornette said, well, have him come out of a box, it'll get a huge pop. Which it actually did, so I don't know why Russo thinks that um, he's he's kind of uh, thrown shade uh, towards Cornette's way. But uh, I do remember that night on uh, Monday Night Raw, and uh, it was pretty good, uh, pretty good entrance. So uh, Terry passed away. Um, I he, Terry was a great signer for years and years, and he had to quit signing because his health had gotten so bad. And I actually had one of his '85 Opeachy cards, which I had never sent to him. And uh, to get signed, and then when I realized he wasn't signing anymore, I actually just sent it to him for him to keep. So um, this is one, my first card that I have of the Wrestling All-Stars card. Uh, as you can see, there's a little brown on there. Obviously, there was some kind of tape or something at one time on these cards. Now, my Ric Flair's also like this, and I had bought a very nice lot for about 110 bucks, and it had uh, Flair... Uh, Terry Funk, it had uh, Jimmy Valant, I believe, uh, had a, a Jerry the King Lawler, a Bill Watts, um, but it was the flair that I really wanted because by the time I'd gotten this, it was right when these cards were starting to get crazy in price, and, uh, and there was a lot of them without the brown tape residue so uh i i felt it was a really good deal to have so this is uh the 1982 terry funk he was actually in the series a which is considered the best series of the three different series of the uh of these wrestling all-stars cards and uh i actually didn't know what the two x's were and i feel ashamed about that because i actually had wrote him back and said Why'd you put the two X? And he said, because I have the double cross ranch. So uh, it was nice enough for him to actually at least write me back and say, duh, it's the double cross ranch. So uh, this great picture, Terry, he's got one of the belts. I should one day research and see which belt that is. Uh, the other one I have is in a little bit better condition. Well, a lot better condition, actually. And when I got this back from him, I was really excited because he did put an an inscription on there uh just a kid living a dream so uh he did a great job now i sent this to sgc back when sgc used to authenticate the card and the signature uh they went to this kind of black border for their label and it looks amazing i don't know why they quit doing that i wish they didn't i wish they'd actually bring it back but sgc is no longer in the auth autograph authentication game so now you got to either go PSA or Beckett. Um, and I believe I've heard that CSG or HGA is going to start authenticating autographs also. So it would be nice to have something out there. Uh, it just goes back to the Billy Graham. I, I had a, a few Billy Graham, so I sold one when he passed. And the guy said to me, why did you send this to PSA? And I'm like, well, the card's already authenticated. The autograph's already authenticated. It looks great in the black label holder. Why would I crack it out and send it again? But there are people that just have PSA on the brain. Uh, they can't get past anything besides PSA. So to me, it doesn't matter what it comes in as long as it's a repable deal, a repable company, and uh, you know that they're they're gonna take a look at it and give you a great opinion. Even though I knew all these were his real signature. One of the things is, as you could tell now, I sent this one, this uh, SGC, I, I believe about two, three years ago, quit authenticating autographs. So this autograph's a little bit older. So you can see how clear it is, just a kid living a game. And then if I go back over to this one, you can kind of see where it's starting to get a little shaky on Terry. This was like right before he had quit signing. So you can definitely see that there is a little bit of a, a decline in the signature, uh, especially in the funk. 
the part that goes underneath here you can just see that that's just very um very shaky and unfortunately that's how you can tell with some of these older guys uh when their health is starting to climb their signature does get a little sing a little shaky on that so very happy to have both of these in my collection uh, I will definitely keep this one that's in the SGC holder, one, because I love the SGC holders and because this is a, a great condition card and it does have the inscription on it. The one with the tape marks, I probably will eventually maybe get authenticated. I don't know. Um, it's one of those things that I always say, if you're going to sell it, authenticate it. If you're going to keep it, don't. Um, or do whatever you like to do, but don't think that you have to do that. If you know it's real, you don't need somebody else's opinion to tell you whether or not it is or isn't real. So um, just my uh, two cents there of, of thought. So I hope you enjoyed these. Uh, really enjoyed Terry Funk. He was, uh, he was great in the WWF when he was with Mick Foley as Chainsaw Charlie. I enjoyed him in ECW. And uh, I actually, I, one of these days, I will do a video on my wrestling VHS tapes. And I actually do have a wrestling VHS tape. It's one of those hardcore ones, but it's actually with Terry Funk in it. Uh, from what I remember, that match did not last probably more than three minutes that he was in. Uh, that's probably all they had the money to pay him for. But... Uh, it's kind of a neat thing. And one day I will go over about, I have about 125 different wrestling VHS tapes. Uh, some are from England. Some of them are from Japan. Uh, I got a couple from Korea. So, uh, the Korean ones are real cool because they have Korean car, uh, Korean commercials in it. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this and, uh, hopefully, uh, maybe I'll be able to pick up a couple more Terry Funks one of these days, but, this card is definitely a, a keeper for me, and uh, just because when I sold the Billy Graham, even though I had a bunch of them, it did kind of make me sick to myself as I was packaging it up to mail it off. It's one of those ones where I should have just kept it in the closet with all my auto or other autographs, or actually I think that one was in the safety deposit box. So everybody have a great day. Thanks for checking it out, and stay thrifty.